In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your very own self-powered jack-o'-lantern. I'll also tell you how to blow up your pumpkins with elephant toothpaste, create your very own floating magic wand, and much more in this video of five ridiculously fun experiments for the fall season. So let's get started. Let's start with an experiment that allows you to deal with all those color changing leaves that are falling into your yard. Grab a few leaves and create two piles, preferably some leaves that are all green and some that are multicolored. Take your green pile of leaves and blend them in some isopropyl alcohol or distilled water will work just fine too. Once you're done with that, pour it into a cup and set it aside. And you're going to do the exact same thing with your colored leaves by mixing them with some alcohol or distilled water just like you did in the original step. Next, take a strip of paper towel or you can use a coffee filter paper. Personally, I think the paper towel works just fine. Take your strip and place one in each of your cups and let it sit for about 24 hours. When you get back the next day, you'll see the pigments in the leaves have traveled upward in the paper towel. Next up, instead of throwing away your fall jack-o'-lanterns, why not blow them up safely with some elephant's toothpaste? We've all seen the videos, but they never really reveal the secret sauce for such ludicrous explosions. But I will tell you at least two different recipes, one that is so safe you can do it inside your home, and the other one that is still pretty safe but a bit more potent, so you're going to want to do this in the backyard. For the super safe in-home version. All you need is some hydrogen peroxide, dish soap, food coloring, and a packet of yeast. Mix your hydrogen peroxide, food coloring, and dish soap into one bottle. And just a heads up, if you're interested in doing any of these experiments and want a little bit more information, I've done full-length dedicated videos to each of the experiments on this video, and you can click on the links in the description for a much more detailed and in-depth video. After you've mixed your hydrogen peroxide solution, next, in a separate bottle, take your yeast packet and dissolve it into some warm water. Then the final step is mixing them together, and you're going to want to take your dissolved yeast solution and pour it into your hydrogen peroxide solution, stand back and watch the fun. This version, as I said, is safe to do inside the house, it's safe to touch the foam, it's no big deal. Now if you want to take it up a notch and incorporate your jack-o'-lanterns, we might as well take the recipe up a notch as well. Now after you've carved up your jack-o'-lanterns and you've had fun for the season, take them outside your home. Now this reaction happens so quickly, you're going to want to find a time to be able to mix it safely while standing back. And what I did was drill a hole into the jack-o'-lantern and insert a plastic straw. As you can see here, it worked just fine. Next up is not an experiment, but really a demonstration for anyone who wants to level up their Halloween costume this year. In this demonstration, I'll show you exactly how to make a magic floating wand. First thing you're going to need to do is go to your local hardware store. You're going to have to pick up a dowel rod and one that's long enough to be the length of the magic wand that you want. You're also going to need a small steel pin, and you can typically find these in the hard to find or furniture hardware section in your local hardware store. The width of your dowel rod should be about a quarter of an inch wider than the steel pin that you find. Drill a hole in one inch of the dowel rod that will fit your drill bit. Hammer your steel pin into the hole that you've drilled. The next you're going to want to find the center of gravity and make one mark one inch from the side opposite the side that has your tension pin. And getting back to the pin that you inserted, you can use a little bit of wood filler to kind of cover up the hole that's remaining and no one will be any the wiser. Once you have your mark one inch from the center of gravity, drill a tiny hole through the width of your dowel rod and that's where you're going to put your small fishing string. But before you put your fishing string in there, if you want to decorate your magic wand, it definitely has a greater effect if you have a dark red or the darker the color that you use to decorate it, the better the effect will be. Once it's painted, decorated, dried, take some fishing line, put it right through the hole that you've created. You're gonna want enough length where you can tie it around your middle finger and it's also long enough to hang maybe six inches from your hand. Now that it's hanging about an inch off from its actual center of gravity, you can see how it actually behaves like a floating magic wand when you move your hands all around it. The more you practice, the more realistic the effect will be. The fishing line truly is hard to see even in the daytime and at night, I guarantee you, nobody's going to see it. The last demonstration I'm going to talk to you about before we get into the self-powered jack-o'-lantern is how to bring in a little bit of anatomy education to your Thanksgiving meals. Everybody knows when you're bringing home the turkey, on the inside, you got to take out the gizzards and the organs, and it's extremely gross for a lot of people. But in that pile of organs, there's a heart. And you'll see from a demonstration that I did with my kids last year, we actually dissected the heart, tried to find all its chambers, looked at the blood vessels that were leaving from it. Before we dissected, we actually made a little bit of fake blood and injected it into one of the ventricles and squeezed it to see if we could see it coming out of the aorta. While it didn't really work according to plan, it was still pretty fun to do. It was definitely my kid's first time dissecting something. So keep in mind, before you throw all those gizzards and inner organs away, there's some science in there that's worth looking into if you're interested. Finally, the fifth experiment is let's talk how to make your very own self-powered jack-o'-lantern. We've all seen how if you connect lemons in the proper way, they can generate enough electricity to power small things. Well, of course it's fall and I had the idea if, if a lemon can generate some 
some electricity, why not a pumpkin? And if a pumpkin can generate electricity, why can't it become a self-powered jack-o'-lantern? And that's what my kids and I set out to do last year. Make sure you buy the right bulb. You're gonna want a small LED bulb. The next thing is you're gonna have to go to Lowe's and get some copper pipes and some galvanized nails. You'll know it's galvanized because it says it right on the label. And the copper pipes, you don't need a big one. And the big ones are hard to find anyway because everybody now is using them to make meth. So if they ask you what your intentions with the copper tubing are, just say it's for educational purposes. The only other thing you're going to need to buy are some alligator clips and they turned out to be a little bit harder to find than I thought they would. In the auto parts store, they generally are always there and they're located in the electrical aisle. Basically what you're going to want to do is insert one galvanized nail in each pumpkin that you plan on using and several inches away from the galvanized nail, you're going to want to put your copper pipe. You're going to end up alternating the clips, connecting one end of an alligator clip to the copper pipe and the other end to the galvanized nail. And once you're done, you will have created a circuit of pumpkin powered electricity that you can put your LED light on. Is it a lot of work to put that many pumpkins, that much wires, and that much work into creating a small amount of light for a self-powered pumpkin? 100% it is. Hope you enjoyed the video everybody and I'll see you next time.